Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Maison African Motives, uh, still working on industrial electronics and two, uh, we are going to focus on TC theory from the question paper, which was written in August 2021. So we have the questions, uh, which is question two, we are given to refer to the circuit diagram above and calculate, which means uh, from this circuit that we are given, we're supposed to calculate the first part, uh, which is 2.11, that is the total resistance in the circuit. So for you to have the total resistance in the circuit, I always say you are supposed to analyze and study the diagram that you're given so that uh, it's going to be easier uh, for you to have the total resistance. So uh, working with the first two resistors, R1 and R2, we can actually see these two are in series. So we can add these two resistors. So let's just have it here. This is 2.11. So we are going to have uh, the first part in the series of uh, R1 and R2. That's the first series circuit that we have there. So we can just uh, RS1. We add, remember in series, we add the resistors. That's R1 plus R2, which is three plus four, which is seven ohms. Moving on to the other part, R3 and R4, these two, they are in parallel. So we've got a parallel circuit here. And also we have a parallel circuit to these two resistors, R5 and R6, which are in series. So these two, they are in series, but parallel to this resistor, also parallel to this resistor. So which means we are supposed to calculate for this series circuit of R5 and um, R6. So we can have the total, let's just wait it here. Another parallel circuit that we have, it's for, let's just RS2 for the series, we have got R5 plus R6, which is three plus 12, that is a 15 ohms. All right, so what I'm going to do is to redraw this diagram in an easier way so that we can understand what is happening from this circuit. Uh, remember what we said here, we are now having a single resistor of four plus three, which is seven ohms, the one that we got here. So we are going to have uh, the supply voltage with connected to a single resistor now. So this is now a single resistor that we have got here of seven ohms. So this is now seven ohms. Remembering the total voltage here was 24 volts, of which it's not important for us to write the, this uh, value. We can just focus on the resistors only. So from there, we combined R1 and R2. We are now left with R3, which is 10 ohms. So we're going to move to R3, which is connected this way. Remember your R3, that's how we are having our R3 here. Then we've got R4, which is connected this way. So that is our R4 in this connection. All right, so this is just a sketch of what is happening here. These two resistors, we combine them and we got a single resistor this time on these two. So you're just going to have a single resistor like this. So this is what you're going to have now. So uh, remember R3 was 10 ohms. So this is 10 ohms here and 15 ohms. And also we have got 15 ohms for the total there. So this is now 15 ohms. So that is our R4 did not change. And also our R3 did not change, but these two now are being affected, R1 and R2, R5 and R6. All right, so we can move on from this stage. We can see that these three resistors are in parallel. So you need to calculate the total of this resistor, this resistor, this resistor, they are in parallel. So knowing that, in parallel, if we have got three resistors, that is more than two resistors, we can use the formula that R1 over RP, which is the parallel circuit, uh, the resistor, the total resistance for the parallel circuit is equal to one over the total, the one over the resistor plus another one. So it's one over 10 plus, we move on, one over 15. We move on to another one, one over 15, which is plus one to that. So we can add. So we put one over RP, which is equal to from the formulas that we have, we can just add one over 10 plus, uh, okay, so let's have this plus one over 15. 
plus again, one over 15. So it's going to be one over 15 like that. Okay, so this is it. We've got seven over 30. So this is seven over 30, which is one over RRP. So to RRP, as we can see, it's one over. So the moment we just invert this, we've got RRP. So the moment we invert, we have to also invert here. So it's going to be 30 over seven. So that is your RRP. So RRP in this case is 30 over seven. Uh, that's as a decimal, let's see, uh, 30 over seven as a decimal is something like uh, 4.2857, which is 4.286. So we've got 4.286 ohms. Okay, so that's it for this parallel combination that we see from this part, the total resistance here is 4.286 for that parallel combination. But uh, having this, I want you to see what's going to happen here. Let's now redraw this part because now we have got a combination of these parallel is they are now connected together. So our circuit now is going to be like this. Let's have our sketch. We are going to have our seven ohms is not affected, but we have the total now of those resistors in parallel as a single resistor now. So this is 24 volts. We've got 24 volts here. We've got seven ohms. And the total of these two, which is 4,286 ohms. So that means our total resistance from there is just going to be the sum. These two are in series. So we just have to add seven plus 4.286. That is the total resistance of the given circuit that we have. So from our calculator, uh, let's see what we're going to have here. That's seven plus 4.286, which is going to be 11.286. So that's 11.286 ohms. So that was the total resistance for the given circuit, for the given circuit that we have. So uh, like I said, it's very, very easier. If you are to analyze the diagram and work from the diagram, especially redrawing each and every stage in a simplest way that you understand uh, due to the flow of current that we are given, it can be easier to analyze that circuit. Okay, the other part, which is 2.12, we are now given here to calculate the total current in the circuit. So the total current, remember, that's the total voltage divide Total voltage divided by the total resistance, we've got the total current. So that was 2.12. So total current as total voltage over the total resistance. The total voltage is not going to change. It's going to remain as it is, which is 24 volts, the one that we have. So it's 24 over 11,286. So let's see what you're going to have here. 11 divided by the answer that we got there, which is uh, 0, 97, is it the one that I used? That's 24 divided by 11.286. All right, so this will be 2, 126, uh, 5. But the three decimal places, this 5 is going to change this 6 into 7. So it is going to be 2, 127 amps. So that is the total current now, 2, 127 amps. Okay, so we have the total current of um, 2,127 amps, which is the one that is flowing uh, on this part here. We've got 2,127 amps, which is the total current flowing into the circuit, which is the one that is going to branch here, right there. All right, uh, let's see the other part, the voltage drop across resistor R3. So across the resistor R3, we can see that we, the voltage is the same through here. I want us to have a combination before what, what happened here. All right, so this is 2.13. The voltage drop across R3, if we can have it from the diagram here, is the same voltage drop that we are going to have here, that we have here. So we are going to work with this parallel combination, the parallel circuit that we had uh, before. So what did we actually obtain from the parallel circuit? Remember, we calculated from this, this is our, this was our parallel combination. Uh, if you check again, we have got this 10 ohm, which is R3, this 15 and this 15. This is, these are the resistors that we calculated here. We obtained a total of 4.26. So this voltage that we, uh, this current 
uh, resistance that we have is the same that is, is being affected uh, by all the resistance that we have are to be affected by the same current. So this is what we have now is a total combination of resistance. So that means VR3 is simply going to be the current that is flowing. Remember, this is where we have our total current here. So the total current is the same that is going to flow here and is going to affect that combination. So it is going to be the total current times the total of the parallel combination of the resistance. So that was the easiest way that we could have uh, calculated this voltage that is uh, 2,127 times RP, which is this one, we got 4,286. So that's it. We can have the voltage um for r3 that's 2,127 times 4,286 which is going to give us something like 9,11632 which is the three decimal place that's 116 9,116 volts so that was our vr3 okay 2.3 uh let's check or 2.4 2.14, the value of the current passing through R3. So we need the current now passing through R3. Remember, we have the voltage now across this R3 here. We now have the voltage on this one. We said the voltage is 9,116. So having voltage and resistance is going to be easier for us to calculate the current, uh, knowing that current is simply the voltage over the resistance. So the current flowing R3 is simply going to be the voltage drop across R3 over resistor R3. And the voltage drop we already have, we calculated this one, which is 6.16 over the resistance of 10. So that's it from our calculator. What are you going to have from this one? Zero point, so that's 9.116 divided by 10. So, which is going to be 0 0.91, uh, 0 0.9116. That's what you're going to have. So, if you're to round off, yes, you can leave it like that, or you can round off to three decimal places, which is 1912 amps. So, that is the current that you're going to have, or you can just leave it like that, still one and the same thing. Okay, 2.15, we need the power consumed by resistor R2. Okay, let's check where do we have our R2. This is where we have our R2 here. This is our R2. So we need the power that is being consumed by that resistor. Uh, remembering that R1 and R2, these resistors are affected by the same current and they are affected by the total current here, which is your IT. So if we have got the current and the resistance, that means we can calculate the power remembering that power is equivalent to the product. So power, that's the product of current, uh, that's I squared R, which is we have the current, the current that we are talking about is the total current, and we are talking about R2 in this case. Okay, so we can actually substitute the values that we have. Remember the current, we calculated 2.127. So we've got 2.127 squared times, R3, which R2, which is our R2 in this case is four. So if we are to multiply this, uh, we are supposed to get the total. That's 2.127 squared times four, which is going to be 18.096. Uh, if we were to round off, it's going to be seven. So it's going to be 18.097 watts. This is power. Remember, power is measured in watts. So that was it. For 2.15, which is the power consumed by the resistor R3. From 2.2, we are now asked to list four factors that can affect the resistance of a conductor. Okay, I want you to have this. I can uh, erase this part. We no longer need this. So let me have it aside here. So we need the factors, four factors, which can actually affect uh, the resistance of a certain conductor. Uh, if we are to, if you, maybe you've forgotten these factors. We can take them from the formula for resistance. Remember that resistance is equal to rho L over area. So from this, this rho is for the type of material that you use. So we can actually have the type 
of material. We have got the length here, L is for the length. So if we have the length of conductor, okay, the length of the conductor or the material that is there, that is the conductor. Then uh, A is for the area. So that is the cross-sectional area. So we've got area here, which is the cross-sectional area. So we've got cross-sectional area of the conductor of that conductor that we are given, okay. Then the last part, this one is from the ambient phase. These are actually ambient physical factors, which means we are referring to the temperature in this case. Okay, so let me write ambient physical factors, which we are referring to temperature of conductor. So here we can actually have the temperature of the conductor. All right, so these are the factors that you only needed in this case, four factors. So you can take them from the formula. You can actually have your answers from the formula. So that was 2.2 for this person uh, to make a uh, total of 20 marks on DC theory. So as you can see, guys, there's a lot of marks in exam that you can actually utilize. You only need 20 plus 20, that's what you can actually have uh, half of the paper. So guys, as we can see, we need to work on much question papers, revisions, so that we can actually be prepared for the exams, which are ahead of time. So that's it, guys, for Mason African Motives, working on industrial electronics and two till we meet.